Hey, what up, what up, peeps? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing pretty well. Hey, Mickey, get over there. Yeah, she's a chill, you know what I'm saying? But uh, today, I just got some four phones right here. The best minimal phone. What is it? Uh, it's kind of ironic that I have four phones to find the best minimal phone, but you know what? Someone's got to take the bullet. Um, I've actually used all these for a long time. This one is my first minimal phone. Um, I used it in high school for two years, as a matter of fact. I liked it so much, all right? I got two of them mofos. <laughs> I wanna talk to you guys about uh, minimal phones. I very recently started using a smartphone again, or like like a fully featured smartphone. Um, but this is definitely like a big part of my life for at least like five years probably. So yeah, minimal phones. Um, these are the four models that I have on me right now. I do want to test out some more models that are coming out, but I'll talk about those at the end of the video. Hey guys, before we get into the rest of the video, I'd like to thank DataCamp for sponsoring this portion of it. If you don't know what DataCamp is, it's an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data analytical skills. You can learn at your own pace with interactive courses and hands-on exercises. You don't need previous data skills to get started, and DataCamp offers courses for all different skill levels, from Excel 101 to advanced courses. One course that interests me personally is Introduction to Python. <laughs> As someone who's never taken a university course in it and works in a research lab, it's been a godsend to learn the basics and teach me things I didn't know before. You can learn directly from your browser and DataCamp doesn't require any special software. You can advance your professional career and build new skills, stand up from your peers with in-depth data and analytical skills. Subscriptions start at $25 a month for limited access to their courses and there's no credit card required at sign up. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, and back to the rest of the video. These are the four <clears throat> phones that I picked for us today. This is the first one, like I mentioned, that I used. It's the Nokia 3310 3G. Um, these came back out in 2017, I believe. They're a remake, of course, of the famous Nokia 3310. Very solidly built. As you can see, it's kind of... Mine's kind of dinged up right there but i use this phone for about two years in high school and uh i just have a short pros and cons list about this phone and uh, my main takeaways from it is that it's very solid but there are some quirks as with most of these phones aside from the iphone um so yeah i'll go and do the cons first and then i'll talk about the pros but um you can get this for about 60 dollars nowadays which is kind of ridiculous because I actually got like both of those that I just showed you for 20 bucks when they had just like were recently coming out. Um, so they're kind of getting price gouged for some reason. I think people are just really drawn to the design and like the colors and stuff. So yeah, $60 is the going rate for one of these guys right now. The cons are sometimes notifications don't show up, which is really annoying because like you'll be texting someone and You'll have received the text on your phone, but the, it'll have a notification right here normally. That doesn't show up sometimes, for some reason. Uh, pain in the butt. These phones use micro USB, which isn't like the biggest deal, but I just like really prefer USB-C. So yeah, micro USB. The camera is really bad, but I don't know what you're trying to do with like a feature phone camera in the first place. It's more of like an FI. Like, I tried to take a picture or something before. Can you guys even see that? I think I tried really hard to get it to focus, but I couldn't get it to focus, so I gave up. Don't use the camera on this thing. Um, but those are my main three cons. Otherwise, <clears throat> the pros, girls really like it. <laughs> uh, this is like a really cute design. And if someone sees you with this phone, they might like you more. Just because you have this thing. It's very snappy, you know? Just going around through things, it works really well. And it's, I never felt like very restricted by using it or anything, it like scrolls great. Um, the T9 keypad was pretty good, like when you're trying to text. It takes, if you've never used a T9 keypad before to text, it takes while you get used to. But once you get on it, uh, I kind of flew on this ring sometimes. So yeah, the ringtone is pretty iconic. This is the Nokia theme. So yeah, I don't know, that's just one of the pros that I had written down, I really liked about, about this thing. Um, and then another great thing about this phone, alright, we do have Disney Kingdoms, of course. However, this is just the trial version, alright. 
So if you do want the full version of uh, Disney Kingdoms, you will have to pay. The trial is only for 180 seconds, and uh, yeah, it's nice that they have Disney Kingdoms on there anyways. The battery life is pretty solid, I have it written down as 3 plus days. So yeah, this is the most basic phone out of the 4 that I have with us, but uh, overall very solid. I would say that if you're considering purchasing this phone, Wait for the Nokia 6300 if you're an American. If you are a European, those are already out for you guys. But Nokia is barely releasing these new guys in the States. Um, and I've been trying to pick one up. But, yep, uh, if that turns out to be not a great phone, uh, definitely. You know what? This isn't a horrible idea. Um, I got away with using it for a long time, so. Next phone. All right. <clears throat> Chin Phone 1S Plus. This is from uh, the Chinese company Chinphone, which is a subsidiary of me, like Xiaomi. And if you don't know who Xiaomi are, they're like the second biggest Chinese phone maker. So um, this thing is actually very solidly built. Um, I'm going to go through the cons first again, but you can get one of these for about 70 bucks off of AliExpress. Uh, when I ordered these though, I got these two together. They're both from Chinphone. And uh, that took a while to get here, so just giving you a warning uh, if you do get it off AliExpress. But yeah, here's the back. Um, bottom. Top. Physically, it looks really cool. There's no headphone jack. That was my first con. And there's also no camera or flash, so I don't know if you're trying to take photos with your feature phone. There's no camera. And also, I'm pretty sure there's no vibration motor in this thing because uh, I've tried to enable it before, like I have it enabled in the settings, but I've never felt it actually vibrate, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't have one. And then also, okay, the biggest reason that I don't always use this phone, I use this phone for about seven or eight months, is that uh, when I'm actually trying to text someone, sometimes, like, when you're trying to have a conversation, the messages don't show up for like several minutes or when you're trying to get like two-factor authentication sometimes it'll take like 20 minutes for a text message to show up so i would say that's going to be a deal breaker for you just keep that in mind because uh, it's really annoying sometimes like when you're trying to log into a website and you have to wait like 20 minutes for it to actually show up on your phone and that happens maybe like five percent of the time but during those five percent of the times it's like super annoying to deal with so I would just be careful about this one if you're a heavy texter. That being said, the the like buttons feel really good uh, when they do work. <laughs> and this one also has emojis, so that's really fun. It looks really sleek, the overall design. It's like a really handsome phone. Um, it's really tall and narrow, which looks really cool. The buttons feel great. It has USB-C. There's SD card expansion on this and that one, by the way. Uh, which is great. The speakers are really good on this thing for some reason. So if you're trying to jam out with your feature phone, there's no headphone jack, so might as well jam out with the speaker. So yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, this has 4G, I believe LTE, or at least 4G, which is a, I don't know, it seems like something you wouldn't really need on a phone like this because why would you be browsing the internet on this thing? You can, but uh, yeah, it seems kind of sus. It's very snappy, just like the Nokia. Um, no slowdowns or anything. The buttons feel good, solid battery. Not as good as the Nokia from what I remember, but um, overall, I would really like this phone if they fix that uh, texting problem. Man, so close, so close this one. All right, next up we have the Chin Phone 2. This is from the same company as that one, so this is the follow-up model. It has a touchscreen, as you can tell. There's a camera and a flash, no headphone jack, USB-C. Same design, no IR blaster, no SD expansion. Cool red button on the side to turn it on. This is an AI button, but I don't think we'll be using that because I'm pretty sure it's in Chinese. Let me check. Bonk. Oh wait, oh. Wait, okay. You can program it to open Spotify. I've never actually pressed it before. So, you know what, that's a cool, fe uh, cool feature. 
as far as pros and cons for this phone, you can get the pro version, which has two gigabytes of RAM for 130. Mine isn't the pro version because that wasn't released when I got this thing. Mine's just the regular one. And I couldn't find a listing for that one on AliExpress. So I just have the pro listing. And for, like I checked the pricing and mine was only $80. So I don't know why they gouged the price so heavily, but yeah. Uh, if you want one of these, I would recommend getting the pro one, but 130 is pretty steep. Design's really cool. No headphone jack. Bad speaker mic. All right, if you try to talk to someone and try to use speaker, they will not be able to hear you. So just don't even bother. That can be annoying sometimes. And also, this is running Android Go, which is like a bare bones version of Android. See, like it has Go Assistant and then Go Maps and stuff. Um, sometimes it can be kind of slow, like if you're trying to do a lot of stuff, GPS. That being said though, um, when I did use this phone, I actually kind of went ham on it sometimes. Like I used Map My Run, which is GPS, and it, like you have it open for a long time with music for at least like two hours sometimes, and it lasted the entire time. So that's a good vote of confidence as far as performance. But if, I think if you're trying to switch tasks a lot, mine wasn't so great, probably because of the RAM. But the CPU I actually think is fairly decent. It's no speed demon, but it'll get the job done. No fingerprint reader. All right. The These ones don't have a fingerprint reader, but I'm fine with that because the T9, you can fly through the buttons, but having to type in your passcode every time you turn it on can be a real pain in the neck after a while. I wish this thing had a fingerprint scanner, even though it's a cheap phone. Uh, that would be something I'd pay for, 100%. Oh, wait, it does, an, it does have an iron blaster, actually. Pro's really cool design, like I said, it really matches my ThinkPads <laughs> because of the red button. Uh, surprisingly capable and solid battery. So actually, uh, if you want a feature or like a minimalist phone, like I don't know if you'd want to watch YouTube on this thing, but you can definitely text and uh, call people without using speaker. And there's like emojis and you can use WhatsApp. It's not horrible. I would say if I really wanted like a, uh, or if I was getting like my first minimalist phone, this is the one I would get probably because it doesn't feel like a huge step down, but it's still weak enough that you won't use it too much, but it's still functional enough that it won't be like too big of a lifestyle change. That makes sense. Oh, uh, and if you do order this phone, make sure you get the global version. So if you find it on Al AliExpress, you want the global version. Because if you get the non-global version with the Chinese ROM, you won't be able to download any apps on it. And it's a pain in the butt to get the global ROM onto the Chinese phone, so just buy the global version. And they also have it in white. Okay, on to <clears throat> the last phone. This is the iPhone SE from about four years ago. So like 2017, I think. Uh, I have the price listed as 50 bucks. I got mine for 30 bucks, but the it kind of has a wide range for these guys depending on the, the condition and stuff. Uh, if you do get this one, make sure that the seller includes the battery percentage or the battery health, which uh, these ones are capable of checking. So I made sure of that. This one still has like 95% battery capacity, so we're good there. I'm actually gonna do the pros first for this phone. Um, it has a great standby time, like all iPhones, you can just leave it there and it'll like go down by 1% after a few hours. Snappy, up to date, inexpensive, great camera. Oh wait, what does that even say? Great, good, good something, I don't even know. It has a phone jack, um, lightning connection. This phone is still too good to be considered a minimal phone in my opinion. And the only reason that I use this thing is because of iMessage. Um, I just have some friends who use it and it's really convenient to be able to message them like normal. Um, but I would say like, if you're serious about like getting a minimal phone, get one of these. Um, I've just been like so accustomed to not using my phone a lot that I can kind of get away with using a more fe like, fully featured one. But this one is like, doesn't feel like a step down on quality, you know, it feels like a normal phone. Like it's still really snappy, up to date OS, fingerprint scanner. Lightning connector, it has the works and you can use every app on it. So I just included this in this list because uh, I bet some of you are considering getting this phone because it's probably like the oldest iPhone that's still up to date. 
It's a really great phone and I, I really like it a lot, but as far as a minimal phone, it's not minimal enough. So, yep, those are my four minimalist phone list. I do have some phones that I am getting in the future. The first one that comes to mind is the Nokia 6300. I've just been waiting for that to come out here in the States, so I'll go ahead and pick that up once it's finally in stock. And then the second phone that um, I'm considering, well not considering, the second phone that I will be getting eventually is this one called the Modita Pure, which is like definitely a minimalist oriented phone. And this one's a Kickstarter phone. It, I joined the campaign back in like freshman year of college, so two years ago, and it still hasn't come out. They barely, they barely like made an announcement that it's going to come out not for a few more months. And this one's pretty expensive too, but it certainly looks cool. And uh, I, I do already have my order in, so yeah, excited for that one. I would say use one of these two. Or maybe wait for my review of the 6300 and then consider getting like a Nokia. But uh, yeah, Chin Phone 2S, my favorite minimalist phone. Thanks for watching, guys.